So the first thing that happens when you're stuck, if you think about what it is to be physically entrapped, like you, you hear, hear of these cases of what, what is known as historic, hysterical strength. Mm -hmm. So if I see someone's trapped under a car or if I'm physically trapped, what I do is I somehow liberate these, these reserves of incredible strength. And that's very adaptive. That's an evolutionary response to being physically trapped. It turns out that we have a very similar response to being emotionally or psychologically trapped, which is to kind of struggle. We don't know where to pour that energy, but we get a lot of energy. There's a huge rise in, in adrenaline. And, and unfortunately, that's massively counterproductive. So the first thing to do when you're stuck is to calm yourself down. Messi is, for all his talents, he's also famously quite nervous and anxious as a player. So he begins matches feeling quite nervous about the way the match is going to go. And I always find these discrepancies really interesting. You have someone who's incredibly talented, but also incredibly nervous, which is not what you would expect. So the question is, how does he overcome that? How does he deal with it? And the one thing he's done historically, in fact, all through most of his career, is he spends the first few minutes, roughly four or five minutes at the beginning of the game, of the 90-minute game, just walking around very, very slowly once the game begins. Now, if you watch, if you plot the movements of the players on the field in those first few minutes, they have a lot of adrenaline. They sort of dart around. They're moving around constantly. Messi barely leaves the center circle. And what he's doing is he's not playing yet. He's a spectator and he's watching everyone else. He's figuring out what they're doing. He's calming his nerves. He's figuring out whether there are any unexpected strengths or weaknesses in the opposition or in his own side? Is everyone moving okay? He'll spot if there are injuries that maybe are hidden, things like that. And as a result, he is much more effective for the remaining 80-something minutes of the game. And you can see this, actually, if you look at when he scores his goals, you can plot when different players score their goals. There are very few who've scored a goal in every minute of the game. But Messi has scored in every single minute except minutes one and two because effectively he isn't playing. And so he sacrifices these first two minutes to figure out the best way to spend his resources for the remaining 88 plus.